So we do have to focus on the history, on the physical examination, and we have to actually listen to the patient. Wow, what a novel thought, you know? You actually have to listen to the story. But if you listen to the story and you actually give some extra time and effort in listening to the story, the story will almost tell you exactly what's going on. You know, when you can really understand that story and then mechanistically get that story into some type of scientific effect, right? Understand what is actually happening neurophysiologically, what's happening chemically, what's happening from a receptor standpoint, what's happening from a nerve standpoint, a tissue standpoint. Put that story into science. Then you start understanding what kind of disease is taking place. Now with CRPS, it is a central process. And that is so incredibly important to understand. For ever, I can remember even back in training, um, my attendings kept saying it's a peripheral disease. And it's like, no, it's not. I remember having these discussions with them. And of course, them thinking they're 30, 40 years older, they thought they knew everything. Well, guess what? 30, 40 years older, what that meant is that they studied back in the 70s with books that were made in the 50s. Okay? They didn't have a clue as to the mechanism, but they also didn't have an open mind into trying to understand you know, maybe some of these newer mechanisms and newer thoughts. With a lot of data coming out, especially in the 2000s, on functional MRIs and uh, uh, data coming out on actual central nervous system changes that occur with chronic pain. And, and these guys refused to listen to that, and they just wanted to keep their old thoughts that they learned back in the 50s. Um, it is a central process, okay? It's a central nervous system process that has peripheral manifestations. And some of those peripheral manifestations have been well described with something called the Budapest Criteria. So this is a set of criteria uh, that came out uh, um, approximately 15 years ago or so. And the, this criteria was really meant to help physicians, healthcare providers, patients understand if they have CRPS. So if patients met you know, these criteria, then, then they have a very high chance of CRPS. And th that data, or those criteria, were really helpful. It really helped us sort of objectify this, this disease state that really doesn't have a blood test, um, or really any test, right? There are some, uh, uh, you can do functional MRIs and they can kind of fingerprint CRPS. Uh, and other central sensitization conditions. But functional MRIs are really very academic in the sense that they're not widely available and insurances don't really pay for them. Um, so, so no one really does those. So this criteria really helped us uh, objectify CRPS and document CRPS and prove that this patient has CRPS. But I'll tell you what, there is a problem with that criteria. The problem is that everyone now got shoehorned into you either met 100% of the Budapest criteria, and you had CRPS because you met 100% of the criteria, or you didn't meet the criteria. So what happens to all of those patients, and quite frankly, the majority of patients who actually have CRPS and elements of CRPS on that spectrum of CRPS, who now don't meet all the Budapest criteria? What happens to those patients? I'll tell you exactly what happens to those patients. They get left behind. And, and we've seen a you know, ton of those type of patients in our practice where they absolutely have central sensitization, they absolutely have CRPS, but they didn't meet 100% of that Budapest criteria. Or, even worse, they actually were starting to see relief from some of their symptoms because of all the interventions that, that myself and, and other team members and other physicians were able to offer those patients. And because they met some of those criteria, they no longer had CRPS, but in fact they did. And we've seen insurance companies leave them behind and abandon them. We've seen other healthcare providers and other physicians abandon them because they say, well, you don't meet these criteria. Um, so that's been one of the challenges now with the Budapest criteria is um, you're actually seeing some people who are getting benefit, but you're seeing a lot of people left behind who don't necessarily meet that criteria.